Hi, kitty cats. A common misconception you find all over pop culture today is the idea of the gender spectrum. Well, I'm gonna blow that misconception open and show you what basic science really says. The word spectrum was first applied to the set of colors observed as sunlight passed through a prism. Scientists observed the visible spectrum represented like this. We can see all the colors from red through green to violet. But what does this representation really mean? It turns out light is characterized by a single independent variable, its wavelength. In the visible spectrum, the wavelength decreases as we move from left to right, from red through green to violet. The human eye reacts to the change in energy of the light, and we perceive that as color. And that is the basic science of what characterizes a spectrum, one independent variable. But are all colors represented by the visible spectrum of light? What about fluorescent pink, like Madonna used to wear back in the 1980s? What about pastels? How about shades Bob Ross might have used? Tints found in the Barbie movie? These colors don't exist in the visible spectrum, even though the human eye perceives them. But that's because the visible spectrum was defined by physicists from sunlight. Even though the visible spectrum is related to the human eye, it does not capture every color the eye is capable of perceiving. It turns out humans are sensitive to three different colors, red, green, and blue. But humans don't sense only one color at a time. We sense all three at once as a mixture of the intensity of each color. Computer scientists modeled the functionality of the human eye to provide a set of colors for computer graphics. The most common model is called RGB for red, green, and blue and combines the intensities of each separate color on a screen to appear as one compound color to the human eye. It is often displayed graphically like this, with pure red, green, and blue at the edges and their mixtures in between. Using only three independent variables with a total of 256 steps of range each results in more than 16 million colors that can be represented by a computer screen. None of the independent variables changes much over its range, only from zero to 255. But even with the limited expression of each variable, the combination of the three expresses much more. In fact, so much more, the result was given an entirely different name. A set of combinations of independent variables is called a gamut. But I said I was going to talk about gender, didn't I? Well, let's take a look at a proposed gender spectrum. This shows the spectrum of gender, from pure masculine to pure feminine. There is a single independent variable, just like in the visible spectrum. In this spectrum, however, the variable is gender. But what does pure masculine mean? What does pure feminine mean? Where do blue jeans fit into this spectrum. What about watching a romantic comedy? How about crying at a funeral? The thing is, gender identity is composed of at least four aspects of identity. In my model, I group them into physical, cognitive, behavioral, and spiritual. Just as the human eye detects color as a composite of three separate intensities of red, green, and blue, the human consciousness detects gender through these four variables, in some ways independently, in some ways dependently. Suppose we allow only 256 levels of expression in each category, only 256 physical appearances, 256 methods of cognition, 256 behavioral patterns, and 256 senses of our place in the universe. Simply adding that one extra independent variable increases the number of combinations from almost 17 million to over 4 billion. Even when limited to a narrow range of human expression, the combination easily includes a human reacting to a character in a romantic comedy wearing blue jeans to a funeral at which he cries. And we are just getting started. Gender is not and cannot 
be only a spectrum. Physical appearance alone is not easily modeled as continuously variable from masculine to feminine. For instance, long hair is seen as both distinctly masculine and distinctly feminine. But add in cognition, the range of thoughts and emotions, Add in behavior from bullies pushing people down on the playground to a new mother seeing her child for the first time. And add in the dependency of social environment, the time and place we live and express ourselves. The human experience is simply too rich to be modeled by a single independent variable. Humans are not a math problem. Not even those humans who want to break society down into only the words male and female. So the next time you hear somebody refer to the gender spectrum, you can nod, laugh indulgently at their lack of sophistication, and correct them gently. Tell them the human experience is so much more than male, female, or expression separated strictly into boxes of masculine and feminine. What they really mean is an n-dimensional combination of both independent and dependent variables that results in the gender gamut. And then like this video and subscribe for more gender education from a scientific standpoint. Talk soon. Bye.